We can be seated and go to the Lord in prayer. We can be seated and go to the Lord in prayer. Let's talk to the Lord. Let's talk to the Lord. Let's talk to the Lord. Tell the Lord as the Lord has said, you shall be holy unto him, that you will be holy. Tell the Lord as you have told me to be holy unto you, through this song we've sung, I will be holy. Tell the Lord, be holy. All it takes to be holy, I will be holy. Teach me to be holy. I will be holy. Whether others want it or not, I will be holy. Whether the devil likes it or not, I will be holy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for the way you've led us to sin. And ye shall be holy unto me, for I, the Lord, am holy. Mm -hmm. And ye shall be holy unto me, for I, the Lord, am holy. And he said, and ye shall sanctify yourself and be holy, for I am holy. Mm -hmm. And you shall be sanctify yourself, and ye shall be my people. And he said, I have served you from all the people that you should be mine. I have served you from all the people that you should be my people. Lord, we shall be holy and we be thy people now and forever in Jesus' name. Amen. As we want to hear thy word at this time, O oh Lord, we pray that you grant us understanding of all that you are going to say unto us. And you help us, O oh Lord, even to put them to practice in Jesus' name. Amen. Make us holy as you are holy. Thank you, Father Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. As we are about to listen to this uh, message, uh, sanctification for saved believer, which is actually continuation of the beginning of in-depth spiritual experiences. And we say it's a package. But I want to say before we continue, any question we have, we uh, leave, we keep it, and at the end we can ask our questions. We understand? Okay. At the end we can ask what? Our okay. question. So, the first, uh, uh, the introduction of this uh, package was in-depth spiritual experiences. Was what? In-depth spiritual experiences. And we told us that there are three levels of in-depth spiritual experiences. That is salvation, sanctification and baptism of the Holy Ghost. Then we say baptism of the Holy Ghost is still uh, divided. There are two uh, also section uh, under it. We have the gifts of the Spirit and the gift of uh, ministerial gift. Then we say we can still divide uh, the baptism, uh, the gift of the Spirit into three sections and ministerial gift into five sections. But we said, if the Lord permit us, we keep uh, going deeper and deeper into all this. And we said, the reason God wants us to study all these in-depth spiritual experiences is because the experiences we see in the Bible, in the Bible days, in the life of believers, we are not seeing it today. We are not doing what? Seeing it today. So, uh, to get the details of what we have uh, studied before, you need to get the CD of the in-depth spiritual experience, which was the introduction. Then the following one was what? Salvation and the fruit of the Spirit. So, today we are in the uh, next one, which is now study three of this special study, Sanctification for Saved Believers. Sanctification for saved believers. Sanctification is setting oneself or something apart for something, someone or God. Sanctification is setting uh, oneself or something apart for something, 
for someone or for God. For example, one can say, he sanctify his room, one of the room in his house for idol worship. That's sanctification. But that is not sanctification for saved believers. Are we getting it? Yes, sir. One can say also, like uh, in uh, the land of Israel when they were persecuting Paul, some sanctified themselves not to eat or drink until they kill Paul. They were sanctified to, to dedicate themselves to that event of killing Paul. But that is not for saved believers. We understand. We can sanctify a car and say this car, we only use this car for going to church. It's sanctified for going to church. We don't use it to go to work or to this thing. But that is not the sanctification we are talking about. We understand? The sanctification we are talking about is sanctification for saved believers. What are we saying for saved believers? We are going to see when we go deeper into these studies. Because they are unsaved believers and they are saved believers. So, but the sanctification, like I said before, uh, that we are uh, talking about today is for saved believers. In order for us to understand it better, we are going to look at it in three points. The first point is, Jesus' admonition to unsaved believers. That will surprise you. Are there believers that are not saved? Yes. Jesus' admonition to unsaved believers. Now, so that we will know that they are unsaved believers, before we even go uh, into it, I'll just quickly show us in the book of John, Chapter 8. John, chapter 8. Verse 30 and 31. 30 to 32, better. Are we there? Yeah. He said, as he spake these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my words, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall do what? Set you free. They are believed. They are what? Believer. But Jesus still told them they need to be set free. Saved believer. Now I will go deeper into it so that we will get to understand it when we get to that division. Second point is God's command. Uh, God commands you to be holy. Second point is what? God commands you to be holy. It's a commandment. It's not a subjection. It's what? A commandment. Something that you must do. And the last point is how to get sanctified. Or rather, how to be sanctified. You need to know when you are ready to be sanctified. You need to know how will I get sanctified. So that since I want to be sanctified, you can now get sanctified. Let's look at the first point again. Which is... Jesus' admonition to unsaved believers. Jesus' admonition to unsaved believers. Praise the Lord. In the book of Luke, chapter 13, verse, verses 1 to 9. Luke, chapter 13, verses 1 to 9. Let's open to it. Luke chapter 13 verses 1 to 9. It says here, There were present at that season some that told him of the Galileans 
whose blood Pilate had, had mingled with their sacrifices. And Jesus answering said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans, uh, Galileans because they suffered such things? I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise do what? Perish. I tell, uh, sorry for, or those eighteen upon whom the towers in Shilom, Shilom uh, fell and slew, and slew them, think ye that they were sinners above all them, all men that dwell in Jerusalem? I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise do what? Perish. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's stop here first before we uh, read further. We see here that Jesus was admonishing what? The unsaved believers. These people, they believers, they also move around. They were with Jesus, you understand? And they were now telling Jesus, they said, look at what happened to those Galileans. Aaron sacrificed them with a, uh, mingled their blood with his sacrifice. Jesus now told those that told him, they were thinking we are believers we are good you understand but those galileans you see because they are not born again because they, they are not believers jesus now said do you think that others are better than they he said except you do what repent ye shall likewise perish so what is that telling us people can be in the church hearing the word of god saying hallelujah amen and yet they are not saved believers. They are unsaved believers. They believe God exists. Just like we uh, learned in our last study that the devil also believes that there is one God, but he do what? He's not saved. We understand. So many, there are many unsaved believers that we think they are on their way to where? Heaven. To heaven. But they need to know that except they repent, they will likewise perish. It may be you that need to repent so that you will not perish. Because it is not just being churchy. It is not just being what? Churchy. You know, one can be churchy. One can be even officiating. One can even be a pastor or a founder of a church and yet be an unsaved believer. We understand? Yes. And end in hellfire. And you'll be surprised. Even those he preached to, they end up in heaven. Mm -hmm. Because he preached the truth, mm -hmm. but he himself did not appropriate the truth. You understand? Jesus said, Except ye repent, ye shall likewise perish. We need to get that CD if we don't have it yet. The last one, salvation and the fruits of the Spirit. So that we really know what salvation is, Oliver, and what is not salvation. You understand? So, now, Jesus is telling unsaved believers, as he admonished unsaved believers in his time, is also admonishing unsaved believer in our own time to repent. If not, they will likewise perish. This admonition include the following. One, except ye repent. Just like we read before, I'll read it all once more. In the book of Luke, chapter 13, verse 1 to 5. There we are present at that season. Some that told him of the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifice. And Jesus answering said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans, because they suffer such things? I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. All those eighteen upon whom the tower in Shilom fell and slew them, think ye that they were sinners above all men that dwell in Jerusalem? I tell you, nay, as, uh, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Jesus' admonitions to unsaved 
believers. We need to shake our life. Is Jesus talking to me? Am I that unsaved believer? That sing hallelujah amen. That even uh, preach or uh, do one thing or the other and yet not save. Just believing without save, being saved. It's like if, uh, a, somebody that fell into the sea. A fisherman came close to him. He said, I can save you. If you are weak, I know, I believe. I believe you can save me. Let me save you now. Not now, not now. Let me swim more a little here. You know, many are like that. Jesus, I can save you. If you believe in me, I believe. You are the savior. You can save everyone from their sin. Let me save you from your sin now. Wait, let me swim in this sin a little. I'm still enjoying it. When I'm tired of it, then I will allow you to save me. That's unsaved believer. Unsaved believer. That's why we talk about spiritual experiences. We said, what we see in the Bible days, we don't see those experiences today. Joseph, we use him as an example. Who his father taught the way of God along with his brothers? Joseph was stable with the Lord. Even in a strange land, his father was not there. Who was his pastor? His brother were not there. Who were what? The church member. And a sin confronted him. Joseph said, how can I commit this great sin against my master and against God? He has a personal encounter with God. But today, we see that it's not like that. We see fighting in the church. We see gossip. We see different kind of things. And I told us of one I saw in the YouTube. They titled it, Fight in the Church. The pastors and the elders were fighting. And somebody was recording it. You know, these days of technology. Mm-hmm. Even with your phone, you can record it. Somebody was recording it. And one of the elders, a female, was pointing to the pastor like this. Then, uh, before the pastor knows, she just slapped the pastor. <laughs> the pastor himself just you uh, are. And the police have to quickly come. Is there not a big shame? Mm-hmm. But see Joseph, spiritual experiences, he ran away from sin. And Jesus is saying to unsaved believers, except he repent, he shall likewise perish. Uh, B, he said, bear fruit or you will be cut down. In the same Luke chapter 13, we now read verse 6 to 9. He spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereon, and found none. Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I, I come seeking fruit in on this fig, on this fig tree, and find none. Cut it down, why cumbereth it the ground? And he answering said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig about it and dog it, and if it bear fruit, well, and if not, then after that thou shalt cut it down. Are we seeing what happened here? The Lord Himself is washing all those that proclaim to be what? Believers. I'm a believer, I'm a believer. Where is the fruit? The Lord wait one year, I didn't see fruit. Two years, I didn't see fruit. Three years, I didn't see fruit. Why is this still occupying this space? I can plant another soul in that space. Say, cut it down. The vine addresser said, Lord, allow it one more year. I'm going to do everything. Put money up, put everything possible. Give the right word and everything to make this uh, soul to grow. If it then doesn't bear fruit, cut it down. And I pray God, God will not cut you down in Jesus' name. Amen. He said, admonition of Jesus Christ to unsaved believers. 
T. Your righteousness must exceed the right that of the scribes and Pharisees. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 20. Matthew chapter 5, verse 20. Matthew 5, 20. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no, way, in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Jesus said, admonishing unsaved believers, if your righteousness do not exceed that of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. What are the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees? Everything they do is outward. They don't have any, just to make people see. You understand? Not make God see. They are looking for the praise of men. Let's look at it in the book of the same Matthew, chapter 23. Matthew 23. Matthew 23. We are going to read from verse 12. <clears throat> okay, let's first read verse 5 before we go to verse 12. He said, But, Matthew 23, verse 5, But all their works they do. For to be seen of men, they make broad their uh, phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garment. Look at verse 12. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. But woe unto you, scribes and who? Pharisees, hypocrites. They are hypocrites, you understand? For ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For ye neither go in yourself, neither suffer them, and ye them that are entering uh, go in. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Praise the Lord. You see? He gave one example, they devour widows' houses. All they want is say, money, money, money. To pray, money. To do this one, money. Almost everything, money, money, money. That's why we see people think church means you come and steal people's money. We went out to distribute tracts. We are trying to give tracts to somebody. He said, I don't have money. Because people are I said, no, it's, it's free. He said, ah, we thought it's money. Because some will go when they give tracts, they might say, donate for... Mm -hmm. ah, you understand? Everything, money, money, money. They now make church to become like a business center. Mm -hmm. So people are now afraid. It's money, money. That's what God said. He said, which are uh, pretense, they make long prayer, they devote widows' houses. Look at verse 12. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrite, for ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte. And when he is made, ye make the in to fold the children of uh, hell than yourself. So if you continue to read, you see everything they do is outwardly. There is no God. In it. Everything they do is what? Outwardly. Even they do some things against the word of God just to keep their tradition. Look at them. Uh, the same uh, Matthew chapter 15. I'm going to read from verse <clears throat> 3. It says, But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? For ye come uh, for God commanded saying, Honor thy father and thy mother, and he that causeth father or mother, let him die the dead. But ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift. By whatsoever thou mightest be uh, profited by me. 
and honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus, have ye made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition? You understand? God, the word of God says one thing, their own tradition say another thing, they now say, no, you must obey our tradition. And they contradict what? The word of God. So, the word of God now is not being obeyed, their tradition is being obeyed. You understand? So, for example, God said, honor father and mother. But they say, it doesn't matter. The child will just see anything in life to the father and mother. They say, oh, it doesn't matter. That's a blessing. Which kind of blessing? That's no blessing. There must be respect for father and mother. You understand? So, that's what the Lord is saying. And uh, it will be among us in Jesus' name. Now, admonition of Jesus to unsaved believers. Now let's look at it also. Jesus also admonished, he said, ye must be converted and become as little children. Matthew chapter 18, verse 3. Matthew 18, 3. Matthew 18, 3. And said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted, and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of yeah. heaven. Who is Jesus talking to here? If you read from verse 1, At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? It's the disciples. You understand? Who is the greatest? Peter. I, Peter, am I not greater than all this? Ah, or I, John, am I not greater than all this? Jesus said, <laughs> I see you outside the kingdom. You are not in the kingdom yet with this behavior. Except ye be converted and be as little children that don't carry himself above uh, others. Don't you see little children? Even the one that is 10 years old, and the one that is uh, four years old, at times they play together. This one uh, act like a horse. The other one sit on it. They play together. Later, they change. You understand? And you see them as one. No eye, uh, 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 low you, great eye. Among them, you understand? Unsaved believers. God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Admonition of Jesus Christ. To unsaved believer, he except ye be born again, and ye be born of water and of the spirit, ye cannot enter the kingdom of God. Let's look at John 3 5. John 3 5. He says here. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot, and he will never, if he does not become born of water and of Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Now, how do one get born of water? And how does one get born of the Spirit? Just put your finger in the same, uh, this place, because we may come back to it, and open the same John, but now John chapter 15. John chapter 15. Verse 3. John chapter 15, verse 3. Now, ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. He said, ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. you. So, what is the water there? Is the word of God. What is the water? Word. Is the word of God. Is the word of God that is the water that uh, sanctified, that watches, that cleanse, that makes one 
uh, uh, to become born of water. You understand? It is the word of God that uh, does that. Let's go to the book of uh, Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 and 26. Husband, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. So we understand now. Born of water, it means what? By the word of God. Born by the word of God. We understand. Born by the word of God. Now, born by the spirit. Because it said, except a man be born by the water and by the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Born by the spirit. How? Look at it. In the book of John chapter 1, verse 12 and 3 Are we there? But as many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name which we are born not of blood which we are born not of what blood nor of the will of flesh nor of the will of man but of god and we know god is a spirit you understand he's born of the spirit so we got it now so uh, I'll just a kind of uh, summarize that uh, point one again. Jesus' admonition to unsaved believers. He said, except ye repent, ye shall likewise perish. So he said, uh, bear fruit or you will be cut down. Three, he says, your righteousness must exceed the, that of the scribes and the Pharisees to enter into the kingdom of heaven. For it says, you must be converted and become as little children to enter into the kingdom of heaven heaven and five he says except ye are born of water and of the spirit you cannot enter into the kingdom of god but i pray god you will enter into the kingdom of god in jesus name be born of water and of the spirit and uh repent so that you will not uh perish likewise bear fruit don't let your life be a life without fruit of the spirit let the fruit of the Spirit and evidence that you are born again, let it be in your life and be converted and be like little children. And be like little children and you shall enter into the kingdom of heaven in Jesus' name. Now let's go to the uh, next point which is God commands you to be holy. A command, God is directly directing uh, specifically to you. He commands you to be what? Holy. In several places of the Holy uh, Bible, uh, there are some type uh, typical error, but uh, we just uh, follow up. Uh, in several places in the Holy Bible, God commands His people to be holy. God commands His people, those that are saved believers, those that are born again. God is not commanding unsaved believers to be holy. He's commanding them to be what? Born again, to be saved. Do we get it? God is commanding unsaved believers to be saved. Now, He's commanding saved believers to be holy. So, one don't go to want to be holy when it's not yet saved. You understand? It's like somebody that is blind physically. We now say He should help us mix uh, some colors together to give us maybe a red color or mix some color together to give us the desired color the person himself doesn't even he can't see yet so he doesn't even know which one is white which one is blue which one is green to now know which to mix together to form another color 
You understand? So the first thing he needs to start seeing before we can now say, okay, when you mix this color and this color together, it will give us that color. Are we getting it? The same thing, God is telling those that are already saved to be holy. But those that are not yet saved, they need to be saved first. Now, God is commanding you to be holy. He said to Abraham, walk before me and be thou perfect. In the book of uh, John, uh, sorry, uh, Genesis chapter 17, verse 1. You see all these people God is talking to, they are already saved. We remember that God in the earlier chapter, in uh, uh, Genesis chapter 12, he told Abraham to leave his uh, father's land and his people to a land he's going to show him. And Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him as righteous. He followed God. You understand? He followed God. And now, God now told Abraham, Abraham, you now need to be holy. You need to be perfect. You know, many people feel God don't want us to be perfect. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. They said, no, 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 no. You can't be so serious like that in following God. Mm. Uh, you are not God, so you just do the one you can do. No, God wants us to be perfect. He wants us to be holy. <laughs> now, we see there, he said, And when Abraham was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. This is even the Old Testament. This is even what? The Old Testament. So if God require Abraham to be holy, he's telling everyone also to be perfect. holy. Now, we see God also said to the Levites, he said, sanctify yourself, therefore, and be ye holy. That's Leviticus chapter 20, verse 7 and 8. Leviticus chapter 20, verses 7 and 8. Leviticus chapter 20, verses 7 and 8. Sanctify yourself, therefore, and be ye holy, for I am the Lord your God, and ye shall keep my status, and do them. I am the Lord the, which sanctify you. We see, God commands us to be holy. But here we see, though God is commanding the Levites uh, to be holy, but God told them, ye shall be holy, for I am the Lord thy God. But God now told them at the uh, uh, later part that, I am the Lord that sanctify you. He's making us to know there are two parts. There's the portion you do, there's the portion God does. You understand? You set yourself apart to God. Then God, now when you're not asking to do his own portion, but you must have done your own part. Setting yourself apart for God's use. Now, you now ask God, God, do your own part. God will now do his own part. But if you don't do your own part, your own portion, you didn't set yourself apart for God's use, and say, God, just sanctify me like that. It doesn't matter. God will say, ah, you feel, I don't know that you are not serious. And you remember God said in the book of Matthew chapter 6, let's look at it, or rather Matthew chapter 7, what Jesus said, Matthew chapter 7 verse 6 He said what? Give not that which is holy unto the dogs Neither cast ye your pearls before swine Lest they trample them under their feet And turn again and rend you So you see if someone don't set himself apart for God's use And is asking God sanctify me Will God sanctify the person? No because it is God himself that said, don't give. You understand? Praise the Lord. Yeah. So God also commands the New Testament believers. He said, but as he that called you is holy, 
So be ye holy in all manner of your converse, uh, conduct. Let's look at it in First Peter chapter uh, one, verse fifteen and sixteen. First Peter chapter one, verses fifteen and sixteen. First Peter chapter one, verses fifteen and sixteen. It says here, but as he which are called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is. Oh, sorry, it's fourteen and fifteen. Okay, let's let's read it like that. Because it is written, "Be ye holy, for I am holy." Praise the Lord. So you see, the Lord is saying we should be holy in all manner or all area of our lifestyle. You understand? We should be holy in secret and in public. Not the holiness we portray just to make people happy. You know, some pastors make the people to believe they should not be holy when they are not there. You understand? The pastor is here, the pastor is here, so you know everybody must be holy. Then it means when the pastor is not there, they can do what? That's do anything. That's indirectly what the pastor is telling them. You understand? A pastor should not say such a thing. Should not do what? Say such a thing. Neither should parents tell their children like that. They should be holy at all times. And that's what Paul said to his uh, uh, to uh, the believers. He said that they should make their election sure, even when he is not there. You understand? Because it is God that sees all things. And the holiness we are portraying is to who? To God. So if we make it a uh, sightseeing that that is uh, for man to see, uh, we just want to please man, it means in secret you feel nobody is seeing you because it's man that you are doing it for. But if you are doing it to God, whether there is man or anybody there or not, you remain holy. That's what Joseph did. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord <coughs> also said, Jesus said to his disciples, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Matthew 5, 48. He said, he said, he said there what? Be ye perfect, even as your Father. Your Father. Which means, the person that wants to be perfect has made God already his Father. You understand? Be ye perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. That's Matthew chapter 5 verse 48 and the apostle peter said uh, said god has given us all that we need in order to uh, be partakers of his divine nature in second peter chapter 2 verses 1 to 4 divine nature and the divine nature of god include holiness though his divine nature also include not afraid of anything or is god afraid of something yeah. afraid of witches and wizard god is not afraid of anything so god has given us everything to make us partaker of his divine nature you understand so we be like god you just think of anything that god will do for example you know god will not be afraid and you will not be afraid you understand God is with me. So you will not be afraid. You know God is holy, then you also will be what? Holy. God is not afraid of anything, anything at all. You yourself, make sure you are not afraid of anything at all. Let me give us an example. Some years back, when I was in Cape Verde, I was preparing a message, sitting, uh, sitting on a, having the book on the table, and preparing a message. I heard a noise beneath the, 
uh, table, like an animal voice. So I lifted my leg. If there's animal, they're not to beat my face. So I look under. I didn't see any animal. And how will animal enter into the house? So as I was thinking about that, the sound came towards my belly, underneath my clothes. So I hit my belly like this. So the Lord spoke to my heart. Don't you know that's the devil? I said, I thought it's even right. So it's the devil. I don't have time for you. So I keep writing and preparing what I was preparing. The devil make the sound, make the sound until he got tired. I wasn't afraid. Do you know what the devil wanted me to do? After hearing that noise, everything, then I would just run, open the door, and start running. Then he will start running after me and be making the noise. Then they would say, This person is mad. <laughs> you understand? Mm-hmm. But I just I said, Make noise. When you get tired, you keep quiet. When he got tired, he kept quiet. You don't need to be afraid. You understand? That's the strategy of the devil. That's what you want to do. But you will not give him chance in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. So, in any way, he may come, he may be in a different way. Just, just ignore the devil. When he's tired, he will leave. So don't trouble yourself. Divine nature, you understand? Holiness is part of it. Divine nature of God. So God is calling us to holiness. So uh, and Paul the apostle uh, make us to know our holiness is not just uh, you don't steal, you don't lie, you don't this. It's more than that. Look at the book of. Uh, Romans chapter 12. We are now digging deeper. We are now doing what? Deeper. Digging deeper. In depth study of the word of God. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. It says here I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. Your what? Your body. You know some says it's the heart, it's the heart. The body doesn't matter, it's the heart. God says no, it's more than that. God says what? More than that. He said, You present your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy. Remember, God is talking to saved believers. And saved believers will be obedient unto the Lord in Jesus' name. He said. Present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy. A living sacrifice, what? Holy. holy. Acceptable unto God. Not acceptable unto man. Acceptable unto God. God. You know, what is acceptable, acceptable unto God? Man may not accept it. I don't like that. But God likes that. And who are we going to obey? God. Acceptable unto God. Which is your reasonable service? Which is your what? Reasonable service. That is, anyone that is not acceptable unto God is unreasonable service. Are we getting it? Reasonable? Unreasonable. And our service must be reasonable unto God in Jesus' name. Look at verse 2. And be not conformed to this world. Don't do like the people of this world. That's what he's just saying. Be not conformed to this world. Don't do like the people of this world. But be ye transformed. Be what? Transformed. By the renewing of your mind. You know the problem is in the mind. When the mind is renewed, the way one is thinking is renewed, orientation, you understand, is renewed. Then one will find out that, uh-uh. so I was the one that was behaving like this, acting like this, dressing like this, doing this. Then we now do it the way God wants. You, you understand? Are we getting the point? Is the mind, the mindset, the what? Mind. You understand? So, is the mind. That's what makes one even to argue when we see things in the word of God. Is the mindset. But when one now allows his mind to be free and just let God take control, there will not be argument. There will not be what? Argument. God says this, I will do. You understand? 
And the song we sang in the beginning was what? Ye shall be holy unto me, for I the Lord am holy. You understand? So now he goes on, he said, renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good. It is when the mind is renewed that one will be able to prove and be able to do what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of who? God. God. Not permissive will of God. Perfect will of God. There is permissive will. There is perfect will. We understand. The children of Israel told Samuel, we need a God and we need a king. Someone said, why will you need a king? God is your king. No, we want to be like other nations. We need our own king also. Then Samuel was not happy. God called, told Samuel, Samuel, don't, don't let it offend you. It's not you they rejected. It's me they rejected. Tell them they need a king, no problem. But the king that will rule over them, he will take their sons and daughters and make them his servants. They say, yes, we still want the king. That's what <laughs> permissive will. They got the king, and their king showed them what they wanted. <laughs> you understand? He dealt, their king dealt with them. So God said, but our own must not be permissive will. It must be perfect will of God, according to how God wants. We understand? Now, let's now see some things that is telling us about our body. Because he said we should present our body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Now, let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 22. Verse 5. Deuteronomy chapter 22. Verse 5. Deuteronomy chapter 22. Verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Praise the Lord. So we see what the Lord is saying here. He said the woman will not put on that which belongs to a man. And a man will not put on a woman's garment. You know there is a lot of argument. Pastor's wife and others they are arguing. They want us to change the word of God. The word of God cannot be changed. Rather, it's man that needs to do what? Change. Now, we talk of pants that is for men and not for women. Let's look at the place where pants is mentioned in the Bible. Though they use the old English here, but later you can type it in, in the internet. You will see the picture and everything. In the book of Exodus chapter 28. Exodus 28 verse 42 and 43. Exodus 28 verse 42 and 43. And thou shalt make them linen breeches. That's it then. To cover their nakedness. From the loins even unto the thighs, they shall reach, and they shall be upon, finish it for me, Aaron, and upon his sons, when they come in unto the tabernacle of the congregation, or when they come near unto the altar to minister in the holy place, that they bear not iniquity. Um, and die it shall be a status forever unto him and a seed after him praise the Lord so we see here God said he should make these linen breeches which is actually what is the pants you just type breeches into Google everything will come out you understand then you will see they will even show you the images and things like that so you see Upon who did God say he should put it on? In verse 43. He said, And they shall be upon Aaron and his sons. He didn't say upon Aaron and his wife. 
his sons and daughters. He said, no, upon Aaron and his sons. Upon Aaron and his what? Sons. We understand. So, which is so clear. So we don't need to now start saying women have their own, men have their own. You know, the devil uses a lot of way to capture and makes one to lose what he's supposed to get. Let's see, for example, we know that secret is not good. Isn't it? Because it can give cancer and things like that. Many people are stopped and also is destroying the temple of God and God don't want it. Many people now because it's affecting their health, not because God don't want it, because it's affecting their health, they are stopping and they stop smoking. The devil say, I'm losing more clients. What will I do? He invented electronic cigarettes. Have we heard of it? Oh, he invented electronic cigarettes. So that one they'll say, ah, this one doesn't give me cancer. Then if you go on the internet, you see electronic cigarettes, you understand? So they'll say this doesn't give me cancer, they don't take it. This electronic cigarette is new invention. The devil is using system. You understand? God will help us in Jesus' name. So we must be very careful. Because the way we don't act like people of the world, they don't know. We have the scripture. We have what? The scripture. The Bible. And the Bible directs everything that concerns our life. And the Lord said, to whom much is given, much is what? Required. You understand? He has given us the light. We have known the truth. And the truth has set us free. And now we need to get sanctified. The sanctification is not just in the heart. Also the body. Also what? The body. And the Lord said that He will preserve our body, spirit, and soul. And to do that, we need sanctification. Not only sanctification of the spirit, sanctification of the soul, body, because body also will be preserved. That's in First Thessalonians chapter five, verse twenty-six at uh, twenty-five. You understand? So the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Now let's go to another place and see that only this simple act, if man also wear women's garments. We miss it. You understand? We see in uh, Scotland, uh, there is a season there, uh, uh, men will be wearing skirts. <laughs> they will miss it. And I see in the inauguration of uh, uh, one uh, church, they were inaugurating new pastors. Uh, because it is Scotland, the, the men that were uh, singing in the choir, they were on skirts. So it really touched me. Do they preach? Uh, the message was nice and everything, but why allow the men to now wear scared? You understand? The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Because they will say they just want to please the culture. But what did we read uh, uh, the last time? They make, because of their culture, they nullify what? The word of God. God we have us. Let's go to uh, Sephaniah chapter 1 and see because of ordinary dressing one can miss it. Sephaniah chapter 1 Sephaniah chapter 1 towards the Old Testament uh, towards the end of the Old Testament Sephaniah chapter 1 Sephaniah chapter 1 <clears throat> verse 8 Are we there? You can want us to see it Sephaniah chapter 1 verse 8 Are we there? Yeah. And it shall come to pass in that day of the Lord of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such as are clothed with what? Strange apparel. Strange apparel. 
that is apparel that are not according to how God wants it. You understand? Clothing, apparel is clothing. You understand? That is not according to how God wants it. God has said, man, uh, women should not put on that which belongs to a man, and men should not put on women's garments. So, if we now do contrary, it is strange. It is what? Strange. So, God said, he's going to do what? Punish. But, the time of ignorance, God went at. But, he now called every man, everywhere to do what? To repent. To correct things. You understand? So, God will help us with correct things in Jesus' name. Amen. But, in the case, like children, maybe... Uh, he doesn't have money to buy and correct things. You have that determination in your heart. As you get one, you put away the other. And you strive towards it. There is a sister where I live before. The, I normally goes to uh, their house and preach to the husband. At first, she was not interested. But she saw the way everything, every question the husband asks, I'll say, okay, then I'll open the Bible, we answer it. So, later I now say, they want to join. I said, no problem. So, she opened up to Christ. After she opened up to Christ, she started fellowshipping also. She now asked me a question. One day as I got to their house, she wrote some things down. A lot of things. Now said, uh, Pastor, Mark the one Christian she use, cancel the one Christian she not use. I said, no, that's not so. That means I'm the one that just authorizing you. Mm -hmm. I said, no. We go through and see in the scripture, you will be seeing it and be marking the one God wants us and the one God don't want us. You understand? Mm -hmm. So, I now start putting her through, showing her in the scripture and things like that. You understand? Because you must, as a child of God, we need to know this is what the Bible says. Because why many people don't really understand is because they don't make them to see is the Bible the pastor just give his own order as the authority is the Bible that is our authority. What is our authority? Bible. The Bible. Bible. It's what the Bible says. The people of Berea, when Paul preached to them, they went and said the scripture and see whether what Paul says was true. They now found that it was true. They obey everything. Paul said, these are more noble than the Thessalonica. You understand? Because they search the scripture and see whether it is true. And they now obey it. And nobody can convince them that that's not true. You understand? That's why we are showing us in the scripture and we are seeing it with our eyes. So whatsoever anybody says does not overrule what God says. It doesn't matter who the person is, a founder or something like that. It's the word of God. And whosoever founder that mis mislead people will receive his punishment for it. Because God is God. Founder is not God. You understand? He's a man. Used by God. But if you now mislead people, God will judge. Because People will not people will not just end in hellfire because of one person and he thinks he will now go in. You understand? Because God said he will require their blood from his hand. And we ourselves we make sure we do our own portion. You understand? As we know the truth, we do the truth and we let others know the truth also. That's why uh, I at times I give us plan of study but at times not all I write in the plan of study so that's why we need a time to judge like some things I said and I showed us today some of them we are not in the plan of study you understand so the Lord will help us in Jesus name so we see God uh, really wants us and want to help us to make it uh, there that's why it's showing us everything every detail of holiness every detail of what holiness and we see for this cause God warns us of the danger of lack of holiness what is the danger of lack of holiness let's look at it in the book of uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 3 to 7 
First Thessalonians 4, 3 to 7. It says here, For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication. Fornication is not sanctification. But if one abstain from it, it's uh, in the part, portion of uh, sanctification. Huh? That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, and honor, not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God. We shouldn't be like the Gentiles, like those that don't know God. You understand? There must be a clear difference. That no man go beyond and defraud his brother, defraud his brother, cheat his brother, cheat his sister in any business. You see that in any matter, don't cheat your brother, don't cheat your sister, you understand? In any matter, because that the Lord is the avenger of all such. Who we avenge? Who we avenge? God. Avenger of all such. As we also are for one, for one you and testify, for God had not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. Praise the Lord. So we see the warning. If we are not holy, who is going to avenge us? God. We understand. Now, also, it, it makes us to know that without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Hebrews chapter 4, uh, 12, verse 14. Hebrews 12, 14. Hebrews 12, 14. Hebrews 12, 14. It says, Follow peace with all men, every human being, and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. If we want to see the Lord, if we want to get to heaven, it is imperative that we live a holy life. It is compulsory that we live a holy life. We understand. So we must be holy in Jesus' name. We just round it up in the last point, which is how to get holy. How do we get holy? How do we become holy? How do we become sanctified? Because now we all know that uh, those that live that are not holy uh, cannot see God. They cannot make heaven. And God is going to avenge them. Now, how do one get holy? First, we know that holiness is for, uh, for saved believer. Holiness is for what? Saved yes. believer. So, what do we do to get uh, uh, holy? If one is saved already, then what he needs to do first, he has to realize that he is not yet sanctified. He needs to do what? Realize that he is not yet sanctified. Second Corinthians chapter uh, 13 verse 5, you can read it later. He said, uh, examine yourself if you be in the faith. Know you not yourself. If you be not, how Christ is in you. If you be not, a reprobate. So you examine yourself also whether you are sanctified. Are you sanctified? Are you living a holy life inside and outside? Are you living a holy life also with your body? You understand? Even with what you put on and everything, you know, we start from inside. Yes. But what happens inside must come, come and reflect outside. When we plant a seed of corn, of maize, that seed, it will first be underneath. But it starts germinating underneath. We don't see it for some time. When we get to some time, what we do we come start seeing? It starts coming out. You understand? You're born again, yes. We may not see it exteriorly, but you are born again, it's inside. But now, after some time, let it come out. Let's see the fruits. Let's see the radiant. This. Let's see affect outside. Remember where we read? Jesus went and looked at that life. One year, nothing. Two years, no fruit. Three years, no fruit. And I told the dresser, cut it down. And I said, Lord, allow one more year. If it still doesn't bear fruit, then cut it down. But I believe God. Between now and the end of this year, our own will bear fruit in Jesus' name. Amen. There will be holiness, even right from this moment. Amen. Real holiness, sanctification in Jesus' name. Amen. Two, desire to be holy, to be sanctified. Desire to be sanctified. That's the book of uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 6. He that uh, tastes and hunger after righteousness shall be filled. If you taste and hunger after being sanctified, after being holy, 
then you will be holy. You understand? See, the desire must be there because God will not force it on someone. You understand? God will not do what? Force it on someone. You must be willing. That's why it says in the book of Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19, it says, If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat of the fruit of the land. So the person said, we desire it. If the person doesn't desire it, God will not force it on the person. You understand? God will not force people into heaven. But he will show people this is the way to heaven, this is what to do. Then when people now desire it, they themselves will now strive for it. You understand? Now, desire to be holy. I want to be holy as God is holy. That's what God commands. So when you desire it, uh, which I say you read in the book of uh, uh, Matthew 5, 6 or Mark 11, 24, then after you desire, you have that desire as God in prayer. Your desire you will push you to now ask God. You understand? It's like when one desire one thing or the other, and I say, God, do this for me, do this for me. You understand? That desire to be holy, then you say, God, make me holy, make me holy, keep me, sanctify me, purify me. I want to be holy. Holy as Jesus is holy. Holy within, holy without. You understand? Then God will do it. He then uh after you as that's you can see that in the book of uh, John chapter 14. Verse 12 and 13. Jesus said, Whatsoever he that believeth in me, whatsoever he shall ask in my name, I will do it, so that the Father be glorified in the Son. And then, D, as you ask God, believe that you have been sanctified, that God has answered you after you pray. In the book of Mark, chapter 11, verse 24, he said, Whatsoever you ask, Pray, believing you shall have it. But if you don't believe, you shall not have it. So if you believe, then you have it. You'll be holy. And Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6 says, Now, for without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to him must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That is, you believe. That's why you went to him in prayer. And you ask him, sanctify me. And as you ask him, you ask him, you ask him, and you believe, then you will be you are sanctified. As you believe, you are what? <laughs> sanctified. Then you start living the life of a sanctified life. If you believe, then you start living the life of a sanctified life. But if you don't believe, you say, I don't know yet whether I'm sanctified, then that is doubt. But if you pray and you pray through and you believe, God has done it. God is not a liar then start living the life of a sanctified believer. Then you see the fruits in your life. And the Lord will do it in Jesus' name. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Are you saved or are you unsaved believer? If you are unsaved believer, ask the Lord, save me. Cleanse me. Save me and make me a new Christian in Christ Jesus. If you are a saved believer, then tell the Lord, God, I see that I'm not yet holy as you are holy. I want you to sanctify me and make me holy within and without. Holy even in my dressing. Holy in every area of my life. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Help me and make me holy. Purge me, cleanse me, talk to the Lord. Purge me, cleanse me, make me holy. Make me holy. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord, talk to the Lord. Ask the Lord to make you holy, keep you holy. Jesus, sanctify me. Sanctify me. Sanctify me. Even after the Lord has done it tonight, you still need to keep praying every day for the Lord to keep you holy. Ask the Lord to sanctify you. I'm promising that you obey. You live in holiness. You start buying attires uh, that, that uh, 
that pleases God, as you have the possibility, you start correcting them. Tell the Lord, tell him to cleanse you, to make you holy, as he is holy. Joseph was holy, tell the Lord, you are in a better dispensation, the time of grace, you will be holy. Lord, sanctify me, make me holy. Tell him your holiness will be, we exceed that of scribes and Pharisees. Lord, make me holy. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, Lord, we thank you for the way you've spoken to us tonight, O oh Lord. Lord, I pray that everyone that heard thy word tonight, anyone that is not yet saved, O oh Lord, that is just unsaved believer, Lord, I pray as they've cried unto you tonight, O oh Lord, you save them and make them saved believers in Jesus' name. And anyone, O oh Lord, that already saved believers, Lord, but not holy as you are holy, not yet sanctified, body, spirit, and soul. Father, I pray, as they have cried unto you tonight, O oh Lord, that you sanctify everyone and make everyone holy as you are holy in Jesus' name. Amen. And Lord, I pray, on behalf of all that have been holy, that you keep them holy. Amen. Lord, that they will never lose the experience of holiness, of sanctification, in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, I pray you use every one of us as instrument Amen. to bring about holiness of life in the life of everyone. Amen. Thank you, Father, Lord, because we know you've answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.